Greetings, viewers. It's freezing in my house. As you can see, the temperature is 65, but the uh, thermostat is set to 70. Hmm, what could be wrong? Alright, this is my furnace. Take the cover off. I am not a furnace technician. Let's take a look down here. Alright, this is the alarm that I'm getting on here. It's four flashes red, which is an indication of something. Okay, according to the book, four red flashes indicates a primary or auxiliary limit switch has opened its normally closed contacts five consecutive times during a call for heat. With this fault code, the control will operate the supply air blower and inducer. The condition may be caused by dirty filter, improperly sized duct system, incorrect blower speed setting, incorrect firing rate, or faulty blower motor. I'm pretty sure my duct work hasn't changed. This furnace has been working for nine years, almost ten. And uh, I just replaced the filter. That's the old filter. So the filter is brand new. So let's take a look at the schematic. Okay, I don't know if you can see this, but LS1, RDG1, and LS2 are all three in series. And then they go to this plug. So if you look at what those are, the legend, whoa. LS1 is primary limit switch, LS2 is inducer limit switch, and ROSI is rollout switch. So one of those three is the problem, evidently. Let's take a look over here. So that would be the primary switch over here on the side of the burner box is the oh it's trying to start up isn't that fancy that would be the uh, rollout switch and down here on the inducer blower is the inducer blower switch that was weird you can just start it up shut it off and start it up again Very strange. Okay, let's fire it up and see what it does. Switches on. Reducer motor fired up. The igniter. Just kicked on. Right now it's running good. You're hearing a clicking noise, the flame just went out. I'm getting the four red flashes code in the window. So this is the problem that we're having. The flame is going out. The shutter off. 
Alright, like I said, there's three different possibilities here. That switch, the rollout switch, and the switch down here. So I'm going to hook up a meter and we're going to find out which switch it is. Alright, just going to loosen up these a little bit so I can get meter on here. And if I check across this switch while it's running, I should have zero volts if the switch is closed, which is its normal condition. If the switch would open, I should see, I have the meter set on AC volts, I should see approximately 24 volts across the switch in the open state. That would indicate that we have, this is the problem. So let me turn it on and see what happens. It's firing up. And you can watch the meter. Okay, flame went out. You see on the meter we're reading zero volts. That means that this switch that we're checking is still closed. That is not the problem. Shut it back down. Okay, the switch on on the uh, side of the burner box, the roll flame rollout switch has a manual reset on it. I can push this by hand and it's not tripped so and I also checked it with a meter. It's not the problem. <clears throat> so the one that's left would be the one on the inducer motor. So let's check that one. Alright, I'm checking across the switch. I'll show you the meter because I can't show you the me checking it and this at the same time, which I already showed you how to check across the switch, so it's pretty boring. Okay, the flame went out. And as you can see, we have 26 volts across the switch. So this switch on the inducer blower is where the problem is uh, occurring. Shut it off. That switch right there is opening and that's why the furnace is shutting down. So now the question is why is that uh, temperature switch tripping out? Um, a lot of people like to jump to the conclusion and say that the switch is bad right away but the switch is there for a purpose. It's there to detect a high temperature in that spot so uh, most likely you would assume first that it's doing its job and that there is actually a high temperature there um, so this is on the inducer blower it's a high temperature I suppose could be caused by a restriction in the PVC pipe or a problem with the motor itself or it could be just a false reading and we actually do have a bad sensor. So let's check the uh, pipes and make sure that there's no obstruction outside. Okay, we're going to check my PVC pipes outside the house and make sure that they're not obstructed with snow and or ice. Okay, there it is. I can you can see I got a piece of screen in there to keep critters from getting in there and there's no obstruction that's visible. Here's the other one, as you can see, that one looks pretty good also. So there's no visible obstruction, at least on the outside of the house. Okay, so where we're at with this thing. Uh, there's two possibilities, either the switch is working fine and there actually is a excessive temperature in that inducer blower, or there's not an excessive temperature and the switch is defective. So let's pull the switch out and take a look at it. Sorry about the lighting here. I'm going to unplug the wires. Take out the screws. There it goes. Fall down where you can't find it. Yeah. Yep. 
I don't know where the screw went. Oh, we don't need it yet. We need it when we put it back in. Got that one. All right, here's the switch. Take that out. All right, let's take a look at this sucker. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it says L160-20F. That means that it cuts out at 160 degrees, and it's got a 20 degree differential, so it will cut back in at 140 degrees. So the possibility is that it's actually reaching 160 and cutting out, or it's defective. So my thought is to check the temperature where that's switch senses and see what kind of temperature we're actually reading. Alright, these are the wires that went to the switch. I'm going to jumper them out with this jumper here that I made a while back. Unfortunately, the only thing I can find to measure the temperature is a meat thermometer at the moment. So, see if I can get a shot of that sucker. And let's see if we get anywhere near 160. Whoa. Maybe get some better lighting. All right, it's hokey, but it's what I got at the moment. So the middle mark there where it says medium is 160. So let's see. If it hits that mark with the thing jumpered, turn it on. Alright, it's been running for well over 10 minutes and it's nowhere near 160 degrees. I'm going to shut the camera off and monitor it for a little while longer. It's been running for about 50 minutes now or more and the temperature hasn't gotten anywhere near 160 degrees. So I'm calling it as a bad uh, temperature sensor, a bad limit switch. I'm going to go buy one and then we'll see if it fixes it. Okay, after about a week of uh, screwing around, I finally got, let me take this out of here, finally got the part. So let's put it in and see if it works. In the meantime, I've, I have it jumpered out and I've been running it periodically when I'm here to monitor it. I don't want to leave it unattended running like that with the jumper on it. So let's take the jumper off. Take the piece of tape off. The thermometer fell out. And there's the new piece. And I'll try to get a screw in that. Sort of tight fit in the hole. I'm just kind of... Oh, that's interesting. There's no holes in it. I gotta poke through this. All right, I'm poking it through with my knife. Hard to get it in the shot, but could have probably moved the whole camera and stuff out, but. What fun is that? Okay, get the other one started. If you can see anything with my hand in the way, but 
There's no way to get the camera in there any other way. It's a tight spot. Okay, it's in. Put on the wires. The heck. Why that doesn't seem right. Okay, it's so now. See if it runs. fired up. It's 3.42 p.m. in the afternoon. I guess p.m. would be the afternoon. Let's see if it runs. If it uh, cuts out. Okay, it's been running for about a half hour now. It hasn't shut down yet, so it looks like the problem is fixed. It would have shut down by now for sure. So see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.